Sometimes on Throttle House, we get to drive some unbelievable cars. Today is no exception. This is the 2020 Giulia Quadrifoglio, and it might just be the coolest Alfa Romeo they've ever made. Where's he going? Something I said? Oh. Okay, that was weird. So while Thomas walks in slow motion for some reason, I'm going to tell you why the 2020 Giulia Quadrifoglio, a car filled with so much character and style, is a perfect example of how new is better. The engine starts at the push of a button, releasing a roar from the quad exhaust tips. And inside, it's really a tech vest. Why is he smiling? James, and this is a 1973 Alfa Romeo 2000 GTV. And I might be the lucky one here because I get to drive this and look at that. Although the latest Julia is also a sight for sore eyes. Because with minor updates for 2020, the Julia Quadrifoglio remains a 505 horsepower rear wheel drive beauty. But today is about trying to understand not only how it fits into the current sports sedan landscape, but also how well it dons that legendary badge. Because that legendary badge also adorns cars like this. A car where performance and beauty come together in perfect harmony. A simple rear-wheel drive car that will redefine for you just how good a four-cylinder engine can sound. A car that very recently has become an obsession for me. And we've brought one out today to try to discover exactly what makes Alfa Romeo tick and to see if they've still got the same spirit all these years later. In this particular vehicle, whose owner has beautifully restored it with the help of Ricci Auto Collision here in Toronto, is a perfect example of what Alfa Romeo was always meant to be. So let's see if the new Giulia can earn the respect of its elder. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. And I've been so excited to drive this car because all you hear is amazing things about it. The problem with that though, is that in the reviewing world, people tend to talk about Alfa Romeo in terms of heart and soul and passion. You see, an old Alfa Romeo like this is all about heart and soul and passion. And when they can't lean on that, they talk about how Alfa Romeo has an unbelievable racing history. This company has an amazing racing history. There's so much story behind these cars. You see, there's a reason that Alfa Romeo is celebrating <laughs> its 110th birthday this year. But I want to know about the car, and now I do. And I can tell you that this car is not a jack of all trades, but it is a master of some. Now we've had the pleasure and the honor of driving all the sports sedans recently. And when I first got into this, honestly, I had to go outside and make sure it had the four leaf clover badge. Because on first impressions, it wasn't nearly as dramatic as I thought it was gonna be. The engine, for one thing, is incredibly turbocharged. There's a lot of turbo lag. And the sound in the cabin, even on full throttle, isn't that dramatic? We constantly hear about how this is a Ferrari engine with two cylinders lopped off and some turbos added on. But that's enough to kill the sound of a naturally aspirated V8. And what you're left with is something that just takes a little bit longer to figure out. On top of that, you've got these ridiculous carbon ceramic brakes, which 
If you're gonna be driving this on the road and never take to a track, never get them. If you roll up to a traffic light in town, even in normal mode, a few things happen. You accidentally slam on the brakes, it shifts to first gear at the final possible moment, creating a jerk motion, and then it switches the engine off and locks the steering wheel. So, not perfect in that sense. So at that point I was left thinking, what makes this a quadrifolio? Scratch that, what makes this an Alfa Romeo? Oh my God. I was afraid to drive this car because I've been in love with it for so long. This is a meet your heroes moment. I've met my hero, still my hero. Everything about the driving experience is so animated. The steering ratio is slow. The gear shift is like a foot long. Everything you do is a big motion. You're so involved with the driving of a car like this. And oh my God, the sound. So this is a little bit of a resto mod. When the owner restored the car, he didn't just restore it, he added some performance parts. But it's important to know that this car, when it came out, had four wheel disc brakes all the way around, which is actually not common for the era at all. And under the hood in the North American market, the 2000 GTV had fuel injection. The owners converted this to a European spec, which means it has carburetors. You see, a carbureted engine like this has induction noise, true, pure, classic induction noise. Listen. So whilst Thomas found an immediate connection with the old one, my first impressions of the 2020 left me wanting more. So after driving the car for a week, those first impressions mean nothing. Because when you get this into a corner at speed, something magical happens. And no, the engine doesn't have the amazing chaos of an AMG. Even though it sounds pretty good on the outside, it's how it handles that makes this car what it is. And it's not just the near 50-50 perfect weight distribution or the fact that it has an incredibly short steering ratio that makes this car feel so nimble. Alfa Romeo have done everything they can to make it feel as race car as possible. For instance, the drive shaft is fully carbon fiber. In fact, it is on every Julia model. And now that the BMW M3 and M4 don't have it anymore, it didn't fit around their new particulate filters, this is the only car in its class to have that. And it seems unnecessary, but it weighs less than half the weight of spun steel. Less weight, less inertia when stopping, less resistance when going. It's also stronger and it puts more power to the wheels. Race car. The driver involvement in this car is through the roof. The chassis is incredible, it communicates with you, and if that doesn't, the steering does. Because take it into a corner and close your eyes, and it feels like the love child of an M2 and a Cayman. Well, don't close your eyes. Although you could, because now for this year, we have all the driver assist and stuff in the semi-autonomous mode, which is actually pretty good. Not like that eight-speed setup that James is driving and all its fancy technology. This is a pure five-speed manual transmission. Uh, see, the gearbox has synchro mesh, but it's a little bit old, which means sometimes you gotta do a double clutch on the downshift like that. And it's so satisfying. Shifts aren't lightning fast. But that's made up for by these massive dramatic paddle shifters, which are incredibly satisfying. And even though there's turbo lag, this is an engine that pulls right to the top. It is a phenomenon, an absolute phenomenon. Alfa Romeos have a reputation for being unreliable. It's not unfounded, but the owner of this car tracks his regularly. He's never rebuilt the engine. He says, you can absolutely beat on it, and so I shall. And the thing that amazes me the most about this car is that in a weird way, it feels modern and sophisticated. The thing feels controlled, but most importantly, it's light. Really, 
really light. Under 2,000 pounds. So it just dances through the corners. I can literally toss it in and you feel the rear just start to go in the most obvious way. And since it's an old car, you feel the vibrations. The, 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 you feel everything, everything, everything you've ever wanted to feel from a driver's car. It made my day just seeing this car arrive this morning. But driving it, it's made my whole year. I want one of these. I really, really want one of these. I don't think I've ever seen you so happy as I have today, even compared to Miata today. You right there? Okay, you, you have to slam it, but I don't want it. I feel like that was worse. I know. <laughs> this is the only car potentially in the world that would stop me looking at this one. Yes, absolutely. Look at it. it. It is one of, honestly, the most fundamentally stunning, perfectly proportioned vehicles ever made in the whole history of the world. That's a very big claim, but I, look at it. It's designed by Zizzaro. Oh, Zizzaro. Yes. You enough. said it's Zizzaro, right? This is designed de Bertone. Bertone, that's like the uh, coach building house. And ah. incidentally, that badge is only on that side of the car, not this side, because when you park it along a street, People can see it from the sidewalk and they wanted to be able to see that. In Europe? Yes. In England? No. Right, right, right hand side. You park on the right hand You okay? No, you park on the right hand side. You put, oh, your, hand, you you put your hand up and I then there's an L. Oh, so That's England. for left right there. Yeah. <laughs> so England actually got left out. Yes, it did. Yes. Maybe they switched it. I don't know. They did right hand Stupid driver. Stupid car. Um, but either way, this has GTA wheels, okay, which are from the race car of the era. They're bigger. They're 15 inches. Look at these door handles. Yeah, like the, like the detail on the little door handle is, is That's unbelievable. unbelievable. It's wow, really that. pretty. And it's so small. Yeah. So, okay, admittedly, this is like my favorite car right now, but when it rolled up today, I'd never seen one in real life. And this was the first time I'd ever seen one. And I cannot believe how tiny it is, even though for the era, it's actually not that small. And I, I thought it was in more in like a normal red. I thought this was like, that it would come in like the normal Like the Alpha, the alpha red. or the OMC, yeah. right? This is actually Rosso Amaranto. Rosso. Okay. There you go. Thomas did an Italian accent. Is everyone yeah. happy? What's the <laughs> snake for? It's actually a serpent. Okay. okay. That's from the crest of Milan. That's part of the Alfa Romeo crest, which is always in the center of the heart-shaped grille, which is on both of these cars and of effectively every single Alfa ever, I think. Except this one's special because this has a Nero Edizione package. You just wanted to say some Italian stuff, didn't you? Did yeah. I knock it? Did I do it well? Knocked it right out of the it park. It just means black edition. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just means the black trim. More importantly, and I guess this is a slightly more aggressive front than that, but yes. it's also got a bunch of carbon fiber going on, including this dynamic spoiler, which oh, drops at yeah. speed. Oh, so cool. And then this carbon fiber blade going up the side. Yes. And we were recently, we had a car here in white with carbon fiber around it. Was yes, it? the RS5. And it was a package. How much yeah, did it cost? Yeah, it was like oh, over $5,000. You know how much this cost? I don't know, over $5,000? Absolutely free. It comes with the car. Really? <laughs> yep. Wow. It's awesome. This doesn't have any carbon fiber on it, and yet somehow it is still so much lighter than that car. Yeah, this is about 3,800 pounds. Yes, this is literally less than half of that. How incredible is that, right? Wait till you drive it, I cannot wait. But perhaps most importantly, they both have the four leaf clover. The quadrifolio. Should we go look at the interior? You wanna do the new one first? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, inside the 2020 Julia quadrifolio. I'm split on this interior actually, because there's some things I absolutely love. I yeah. love the white and green stitching going yes, on here. I good. love the subtle carbon fiber accents everywhere. It's oh, not overly yeah. done, even though it's, it's a bunch of It's actually really well made. That's not creaking at all. No, the build quality is amazing. Uh, we have a few changes though Which for 2020. Which is not typical for, for Alphas, but go on. No, go on yeah, no, yeah. I remember the Stelvio wasn't... The Stelvio is creaky Yeah, yeah this, this, this doesn't seem to be, yeah. So we have a few changes for 2020. The steering wheel, there's no longer a gap here. We have carbon fiber with the quadrifolio going on. Uh, there's also some redesigned bits, like in the center, the gear shifter. Oh, with this the is leather. leather on it now. There's some extra leather surfaces. Yep. And we have this new screen and infotainment. That's the new screen? This is the new screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. This looks like a McLaren. It's, it's so widescreen, it's too widescreen. It looks like someone yeah. went to McLaren and stole it and was like, I've got it. And then they just didn't listen that it was vertical and they just stuck it inside. <laughs> but this is the new infotainment. Yeah. It's yeah. actually really easy to use and it has CarPlay. So I've been using that and it's, and it's brilliant. This has a Harman Kardon sound system is as it standard. Good? It's perfectly good, yeah. yeah? No okay. complaints at all. 
Uh, we don't have a digital gauge cluster Well, we kind yet. of do. We kind of do. We have half of one. We have an analog speedometer. One out of three things are digital. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. But this is, well, this is a miles per hour. This is an American car in Canada. Yes. We are in Canada. Yes. So we this are is, imposters. This gauge cluster, I don't mind it at all, actually. No, uh, it's some, not. Some people think that it should be a digital one. I, I like analog gauges. Basically... If BMW's gauge cluster looked like that right now, I'd be a happy boy. Because I hate what they're doing, and this is better than that. So, oh, these paddle shifters are awesome. Yeah, too. wonderful. But these are column-mounted paddle shifters. Column mounted. They are huge, and yes. they are probably the most satisfying this side of because they have, Lamborghini. Because they, they have a click to them. They have a click. There's, yes. there's a lot of throw to them. These are not the crazy carbon fiber bucket seats, though. No, we've saved some money. That's good because these are very comfortable, and those were not. Yeah, they're very and bolstered. And they creaked though. like crazy. Those are those carbon fiber buckets. Oh yeah. In no, the but these are bolstered. I would say overly yeah. bolstered almost. But yeah. then when you drive it spiritedly, it works. See, the, the the only issue that I have with this interior overall is that for the price that you're paying, other German competitors have nicer overall interiors. But I think this is clean. It is. It and is. we've got wireless charging now. Ooh, it's an extra fancy. option, but it does it does charge it. It is absolutely acceptable. And the thing is, is that you are not buying this car for the interior dashboard design. You're no. just not. No. You're just not. Did you want to see what an Alpha from many years ago looks like? How many years? Quick. Oh, math. It's 30, 1973. 30. What year are we? 2020. Oh, it's a bad year, isn't it? It's a it? bad year. Yeah. Yeah, no so. one will say that's a good year. No. Okay. No one will drink wine from yeah. this year. This is 47. 47 years. Yes. Yeah, let's go have a look. Okay. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> How crazy is this? Oh, it's, oh, look at that fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher because the owner tracks this car. Like, an oh, absolute legend. What a hero. And on my side of the footwell, we have some Alphaholics pedals. From oh, that. wow. Yeah, and they're beautiful. Um, yeah, so... There's some features in here. Oh, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we've got a, um, so there's an automatic cigarette lighter down here, which is fantastic. You, you put the cigarette in, in there, and then you push it, and it lights the cigarette. Oh, and, that's possibly the most European thing of all time. Yeah, yeah, very Italian. And then, oh, wait, we also have an, we have, we have an ashtray. Okay, so there's like a smoke vibe with the fire extinguisher, yeah. the ashtray, the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Burn, burning, it's yes. It's weird to have this now, because like, obviously we live in a vape nation. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes. yeah, anything going on in the back? That one has heated rear seats. Um, well, there's there's some ashtrays back there. Oh, there's some more ashtrays. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But other than that, there's there's no radio. You can add them aftermarket, um, and you'd put the radio in the dashboard. But we've got this beautiful wood paneling with two. This is stunning. Look at these headrests. There's they, wood coming. Well, they're, they're, to be fair, they're not actually headrests. They're more like neck bra breakers. Maybe that was how, back in the day. That was how you're supposed to drive. Mm -hmm. Like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> look at the wood in between. No, I know, I know. Well, everything about this is first of all, the owner has done an impeccable job. This looks like a brand new car. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll be honest, it is a bit down on features. Yeah. Does it even have like air conditioning? Yeah, 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 it's right here. That's a window. It's Italian air conditioning. I just open that up, and not only does it let fresh air in, it intentionally directs it to my... This... Phone? Y yes. <laughs> Italians. But you know what's funny? The new one, Interestingly, the start button. Yes. I don't know what that is. I'm going to ask you in a second. But there's a fun red start button on that, and I'm wondering if it's an ode to whatever that is. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. looks like those. A, that's, that's a windscreen a, wash wiper. That's a, don't do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't it's actually. It could be an eject button. Well, it's a big red button. But there's one in there too. Yeah, They've it's kept cute. it. Old versus new. <laughs> I can't even tell the difference that's, between that's, these that's two. Pretty. One thing you notice though, is the driving position is a little bit different to a modern car. Okay. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, though. Like, I'm, I'm actually in a spot where I, my arms are bent on the wheel and my feet are in the right spot. I'm actually really pedals. comfortable here. The seats are very There's more room in this than a modern-day Miata passenger. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Yeah. And this somehow weighs less than a Miata as well. well. A lot less. A lot less. I want to drive it. Are you ready? Have you ever driven a car this old before? Uh, maybe the Beetle we tried that one time? Yeah, the Beetle was about the old. This is... That was scary. So superior. <laughs> This is my first moment driving this. That is awesome! I know how special this looks from the outside and now I know how special it feels to be on the inside. That is much quicker than I thought this was gonna be. I guess it weighs nothing. I, 
Yeah, the, the only thing missing is a, is, a, is a lady with a headscarf next to me and black sunglasses. Because you just travel back in time in this thing. That's the cell. That's the theatre. And that's slightly missing from the new one. So it's lacking some theatre in the sound department. But it's an incredible car. It feels like an extension of yourself. But if you were to choose that for its specialness and its uniqueness on the road and how good it looks over the M3, the C63, the RS5, who could blame you? This is a special day for Throttle House. Historic! So I've driven this car before. I've driven this car hard before. It has a, one of those torque vectoring differentials in the rear and it will just let the rear go when you want it to. And that, coupled with how stiff this car feels, makes it one of the best driving sedans I've ever been in. But again, there is this, this connection to the car that Alpha has obviously cared about enough to carry 50 years through their history. <laughs> obviously, the new car is faster. The new car is more sophisticated. I'm being air conditioned right now. But I can tell you that both of these are genuine fun to drive. Once you get it on a back road and you really open them up, I know it's cheesy to say, and I know we made fun of it already, but there is a heart and soul to these cars that you cannot deny. I started this day thinking that that old car was my dream car. And guess what? It still is.